All right, welcome back. In this video, we're looking at how to make while loops. Um, C++ is really good at doing repetitive tasks over and over again. And uh, while loop is, I think, one of the simplest ones, uh, examples that we can make uh, for learning how to do this. So this whole program here that we're looking at is an investment calculator that I've made. The only thing that it's missing is the while loop that we're going to do in a second. Um, but if we're looking up here, here we've declared all the variables that we're going to need and then down in this section we're just seeing in and seeing out with the user entering the initial investment, their yearly contributions, the interest rate and what is the goal that they're trying to get. Is this person trying to double their money or are they trying to get a million dollars? I just did this already because there's no point in just having you guys watch me type this stuff in, right? That's not the purpose of this video. Um, down here this is the part where we're just seeing out to the user. We're going to say it took you however many years to reach your goal of uh, whatever, you know, double to double your money or a million dollars, whatever. Uh, so again, you just don't need to watch me type that stuff in. You guys know how to do this. Um, you're here to learn how to use well loops. Okay, so in our well loop, we can take out the comments now because uh, we're actually going to be doing this. You'll see this is a very similar structure to an if statement, right? You remember, if this stuff is true, do this. Uh, whereas our well loop here is saying, well, this stuff is true, do this. And that means that if this condition isn't true, it's going to do the statements again. And if when by the time you get to the end of the statements, if this condition still isn't true, it's going to do them again. It's going to do them again. And especially in our case, we're doing an investment calculator. So we know that our money is hopefully going to be increasing. So it will surpass our goal at some point. So we can say, well, balance is less than goal, right? Then do this stuff. OK, so that makes sense. Uh, and if you just uh, if you just want to look at these variables again, if you're still not entirely sure, just take a look at this and just make sure you know which variables we're talking about. So first things first is this will be uh, we're gonna do this iteration for once every year, so we're gonna have to increment the year. So we will write like this: years plus plus. Okay, this is exactly the same. This is the incremental operator. This is exactly the same thing as saying years is equal to years plus one, right? Uh, but this is a much cleaner, more compact version of writing it, and just better etiquette in C++ that we're able to use this incremental operator. If we wanted to subtract one, you know, if it was minus one for some reason, then we could write C, uh, years minus uh, minus minus. Um, but we are incrementing, so it will be going up. Okay, so it looks like that. So each year we're going to increase the the year count. So if it took one year to double our money, then we'll know. Uh, next up, we have to figure out what our interest is for each year. And the interest is going to be different each year, right? Because there'll be a little more interest um, each year because the balance will be a little bit higher, even though the rate still is the same. So we're going to create a variable inside the loop. So we'll call it double interest. Um, and this is equal to, this will be balance times rate over 100 okay and we'll explain this here right now so let's pretend the person inputs a hundred dollars for the initial investment at a rate of five percent this will be a hundred times five over a hundred so one year of interest the first year of interest would be five dollars right five percent of a hundred makes sense now the important thing is when we're talking about uh, variables inside of a loop if we create a variable this double interest inside of a loop it only exists inside that loop. We can call other variables from outside the loop, like this years, years here was created up here, and we can use it in the while loop. But if we try to reuse something with interest down here, it's just not going to know what we're talking about. It will say that's not defined in the scope. Now, the other thing you have to pay attention to here is uh, you can re it's really easy to be off by one in your loops. Uh, for example, uh, if we initialized, you can see here I initialized years to be zero. So when we come in and calculate that first year of interest, we're going to set years plus one. It'll be zero plus one, and then we'll calculate the first year of interest and add all those together. So remember, if it was $100, we'd have 105 or something. So our yearly balance after one year would be $105. Whereas if I initialize this to years equals one, then it would wrongly say that after two years, because years would be two, that we would have $105. So be careful. You have to be really careful when you're doing loops that you're not off by one. And uh, just really uh, pay attention to that. And maybe even draw a flowchart to make sure that you're not being off by one. And you'll find it actually really helps. So the next thing we just have to do then is just to add all of the interest and maybe the contributions to the new balance. So we'll say that balance is equal to whatever the balance is, plus the interest. 
enter rest. There we go. And also we're going to throw in here plus uh, contributions in case we're doing some sort of calculator where the person is actually um, investing you know, money every year on top of their initial investment. All right. So that should be everything we need. Um, let's uh, save this and see what happens. Okay, so our initial investment. Let's say we want to put in oh, ten thousand dollars. We're not going to contribute anything at five percent, and we want to see just how long this takes to double, right? So twenty thousand dollars. So our calculator is telling us it's going to take fifteen years for our money to double. Hey, that's pretty cool. What if we uh, what if we invest some money? You know, uh, actually here, let's do ten. What if we uh, had zero con contributions and maybe a 6% interest rate, right? And our goal again is 20, 1, 2, 3. So now it's taking 12 years. So you can see uh, this is a very flexible program. Uh, also, maybe uh, let's do one last example. $10,000 $10, initial investment. We're going to invest $1,000 a year. And then at 5% and a goal of $20,000. So... Now it's only taking six years. You can see that really makes a difference. Um, but moral of the story is uh, the, what's happening here is C++ is just redoing this over and over again. Every time the balance is not over the, greater than the goal, it's just going to increment the year, calculate the new interest for that year, and add that new interest plus any contributions plus the existing balance to that balance. So you're seeing that this is only three lines in this loop and it's so powerful. We're doing like multiple, multiple combinations. We basically just did 15 calculations with the click of one button. Um, so you can see how powerful this is. Other things you can do, maybe if we don't want to double, maybe we have that $10,000. Um, let's say we're going to add in an extra $1,000 a year. Feeling rich. Uh, at 5% and say we want a million dollars. One, two, three, one, two, three. There we go. It's going to take us 73 years to reach your goal of a million dollars. So with this simple little loop here, um, we can find out a whole lot of stuff about you know investment banking. That's pretty cool. So I hope you understand how this works and I'll see you guys in the next video. We'll talk about some other loops we can do.